Good morning to all my fellow parishioners, neighbors, and friends at Holy Cross Faith Memorial, and a very warm welcome to the visitors who are with us today. My name is Mary Beck Eckerd. I am the virtual usher for today, which is the 12th Sunday after Pentecost. Virtual, there's that word again. Haven't we heard that a lot lately, and maybe we're even getting kind of tired of it, but I, for one, am very thankful that we have these virtual services. We can come to church every Sunday morning. So it's time for church. Let's go. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Grant, O merciful God, that your church, being gathered together in unity by your Holy Spirit, may show forth your power among all peoples to the glory of your name, 
Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The first lesson is from Isaiah. Listen to me, you that pursue righteousness, you that seek the Lord. Look to the rock from which you were hewn and to the quarry from which you were dug. Look to Abraham, your father, and to Sarah, who bore you. For he was but one when I called him, but I blessed him and made him many. For the Lord will comfort Zion. He will comfort all her waste places and will make her wilderness like Eden, her desert like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness will be found in her, thanksgiving and the voice of song. Listen to me, my people, and give heed to me, my nation, for a teaching will go out from me and my justice for a light to the peoples. I will bring near my deliverance swiftly. My salvation has gone out and my arms will rule the peoples. The coastlands wait for me, and for my arm they hope. Lift up your eyes to the heavens, and look at the earth beneath. For the heavens will vanish like smoke. The earth will wear out like a garment, and those who live on it will die like gnats. But my salvation will be forever, and my deliverance will never be ended. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us read Psalm 138 together. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods, I will sing your praise. I will bow down toward your holy temple and praise your name because of your love and faithfulness. For you have glorified your name and your word above all things. When I called, you answered me. You increased my strength within me. All the kings of the earth will praise you, O Lord, when they have heard the words of your mouth. They will sing of the ways of the Lord, that great is the glory of the Lord. Though the Lord be high, he cares for the lowly. He perceives the haughty from afar. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you keep me safe. You stretch forth your hand against the fury of my enemies. Your right hand shall save me. The Lord will make good his purpose for me. O Lord, your love endures forever. Do not abandon the works of your hand. The first lesson is a reading from Romans 12. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds, so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of yourself more highly than you ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body we have many members, and not all the members have the same function. So we who are many are one body in Christ, and individually we are members one of another. We have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, prophecy in proportion to faith, ministry in ministering, the teacher in teaching, the exhorter and exhortation, the giver in generosity, the leader 
and diligence, the compassionate and cheerfulness. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Now, when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say the Son of Man is? And they said, Some say John the Baptist, but others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he sternly ordered the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. But who do you say that I am? Now when I hear that, I feel like I'm back in seminary taking what we would call our Midler exams. A tender time, those Midler exams as you a, still think that every theological question has a correct and simple answer. Spoilers, they do not. And B, you still think you know everything. Spoilers, I do not. But I wonder sometimes if we hear this question as Jesus' mid-gospel exam. We are about halfway through Matthew's account of the gospel, so it makes sense that Jesus might gather the guys together and say, okay, let's see what you've learned. If you really understand, who am I? Now, most of us know the right answer. We, we've got Peter's cheat sheet handy right here in the lesson. We've already heard Peter's response. You are the Messiah, the son of the living God. But today's gospel is not, however, about giving the right answer. This is not a test. This is not about what is in our head, but what is in our heart. It's about what lies at the core of our existence. Jesus is asking the disciples to consider what centers their lives, about what, what is the access about what their world turns. And it's not enough just to give the right answer. They are to become and reveal the answer by their lives and their words and their actions. Those things for Jesus are foundational for a life of discipleship. Now, of course, we all have some center from which we live. People, things, experiences all tend to become part of our anchor point, the center of our life. They give us our bearings and stability. Our center orients our life and the direction that we go. It not only shapes how we live, but more importantly, who we are becoming. Maybe it's your kids, maybe it's your spouse, maybe the relationships that you have with friends. Sometimes it's your beliefs, your opinions, or even your prejudices. Anger or fear can live at the center of a life, and for some, profound loss and grief become their world's center. Now, for others, love and beauty may be the defining axis of life, and for some, it evidently is the college football team that they cheer for. So who or what is our center? Because whatever it is, that center is capable of inspiring you, enlivening you, and even growing you just as much as it can keep you stuck and cause life to stagnate. We often discover what lives at the center of our world during the tough times because that's when the experiences and circumstances of life knock us off kilter. Everything is thrown out of whack and we struggle to regain our center. Now, I think that we're all going through that, at least a tiny bit of that these days. And so it's not surprising that many are realizing that they have settled for something other than Christ on which to center their lives. Folks, Christ is the true center. Now, that doesn't mean that there won't be difficulties or pain or losses, but it does mean that when they occur, the center holds. 
And we all need a center that will hold. Now, one of the great centers of the world that I wanted to visit while in Jerusalem, but could not, is the Dome of the Rock. It is a Muslim shrine now, but it has significance for both Judaism and Islam. The rock at the center is, according to Muslim tradition, the spot where the prophet Muhammad ascended into heaven. According to Jewish tradition, the rock was the center of the Holy of Holies and the center of the world. It is said that this is the rock to which Abraham came to sacrifice his son Isaac. And I wanted to get that sense of the place's importance in person. It's considered in Jew holy Jewish writing that Israel is at the center of the world and that at the center of Israel is Jerusalem. And at the center of Jerusalem is the temple, and at the center of the temple is the holy place, and at the center of the holy place is the ark, the presence and glory of God. And underneath the ark is the foundation, the rock upon which all of this rests, layer by layer, deeper and deeper, to the center of the center. And this is exactly what Jesus is doing with his questions in today's gospel. Who do people say that the Son of Man is? But you, who do you say that I am? Now in the first question, Jesus is asking the disciples what the disciples hear and see around them. And the second question, he wants to know what they see and hear within themselves. Jesus is always inviting us to go deeper, to look within and discover who or what our life is centered on, and then to recenter. But wait, you may ask, we're followers of Christ. Isn't he already our center? Uh, maybe so. But the life of discipleship, like forgiveness, like love, is not a one-time choice. It's a continual decision, a continual commitment, a continual recentering. And Simon Peter responds, you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the living one. And he responds in this way again and again. Now this is more than just a simple answer. Anyone who has made an altar call or a personal testimony in front of your peers know that you can't say something like that without recentering your life. And it's the same for Peter. Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah. I tell you, you are Peter. And on this rock, I will build my church and here we have one of the great renamings in the Bible. Jesus renames Simon and gives him a Greek name, Petros, which in English means rock. Simon is now rock. Friends may call him Rocky. But whenever we recenter our lives on Christ, we become a new person. And I am blessed to know plenty of folks whose lives are centered on Christ and their stability is remarkable. We become the foundation the rock on which rests the church, the new ark that holds and reveals the presence and glory of God. Now, I don't know if you've been tuning into the news recently, but I find it remarkable that even with all its frailties, Jesus chooses human life and the relationships to be the rock on which he builds his church. But I also know that this doesn't mean that we're unmovable or unchangeable, and it certainly doesn't mean that it happens overnight. Was water slowly forms and shapes a rock over time, so does a lifetime of recentering form and shape us to be Christ's foundation in this world. And I'm not saying that it'll be easy either, because we have to continually let go of what we thought centered our lives and move to our true center, the Messiah, the Son of God, the living one. And it's not for lack of opportunity. Every up and every down in life is an invitation for us to examine our priorities. It is something that we do over and over, and we don't always get it right. Just look at Peter. He's the one of little faith sinking in the water. He doesn't understand the parables. He argues with Jesus and ends up being called Satan by Jesus. He falls asleep when he's supposed to be praying in the Garden of Gethsemane. He denies knowing Jesus. And yet, through all of this, he was being shaped, formed, molded into the rock Jesus knew him to be. And ultimately, Peter was crucified for what was at the center of his being, following 
and loving Jesus. But really, what are you going to do when the Lord says, you are the rock, and on this rock I will build my church? But really, what are you going to do? Because he says the same to you. Who do you say that I am? Don't just answer his question like it's on an exam. Go live the answer. Discover the you that Jesus knows you to be. Live with hope in the midst of despair. Love your neighbor as yourself. Through the, though the gates of death be open to you, know that they cannot prevail. Care for the poor, feed the hungry, and defend the oppressed. Offer forgiveness despite your anger. Pray when you are too busy to pray. Love your enemies despite your fear. Deny yourself. Take up your cross and follow him. Practice generosity in a time of self-centeredness. Reach out and love in the midst of social distancing. Recenter, even when it feels like you cannot stand up. Do these. Be the rock. Be the rock on which Jesus' church stands before the world. Amen. Let us affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Prayers of the People, Form 3 found on page 387 of the Book of Common Prayer. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church, that we all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you, that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Will and Ryan, our clergy, and for all bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for Donald, our president, Henry, our governor, Tom, our congressman, and Tim and Lindsay, our senators, and all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, that there may be justice and peace on the earth, Give us grace to do your will, especially in the Pauli's Prayer Quilt Ministry and in all that we undertake, that our works may find favor in your sight. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life, especially for the birthdays of Mika Campen, Jim Watkins, Bubba Southard, Jack Koontz, Helen Thomas, Debbie Squires, and Hadley Davis, 
and for the wedding anniversaries of Alec and Margie Barron, Ted and Dean Roth, and Carolyn and Dean Berry. Today we offer our prayers for parish members, Jim McBride, Ira Thomas, Katie Harris, Aaron Yulfelder, Bonnie Lee Decker, Kelly Curran, Libby Lundvall, Marcia Kaminsky, Diana Farrell, Betty Godley, Roger Prosser, Rita Schreier, and family, and Lauren Belt, Sharon Carr, Jillian Butts, Jack Cox, Elizabeth Dumphy, Lynn Van Eck, and Shirley Besselou. And for friends of this parish who are sick or suffering, especially Marge, Tammy, Ava, Nancy, Tolu, Karen, Earl, and Olivia. For those serving in the armed forces, especially Staff Sergeant Amanda Finnegan, McLennan James, Ryan Combs, Michael Modesto, Dan Hewitt, Ed Knackbauer, and Ensign Ryan Iverson. And for others who protect us at home and abroad, especially Midway Fire Rescue. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, we remember York Place Episcopal Home for Children. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble, that they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Almighty and eternal God, so draw our hearts to you, so guide our minds, so fill our imaginations, so control our wills, that we may be wholly yours, utterly dedicated unto you, and then use us, we pray you, as you will, and always to your glory and the welfare of your people, through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. I invite you to share a sign of peace with a member of your own household or by sending a text or an email to someone apart from you. Let us sing of the ways of the Lord, for great is God's glory and his love endures forever.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For by your prophets you foretold the coming of your son Jesus, and by the confession of Peter you revealed him to the disciples as the Messiah the Son of the living God. On this good news and by faith in him, your church is built. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you and your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me.
Therefore we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit, to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. <laughs>